Live with Ryan Reese from Southern California. This is Live with Ryan Reese. Call now, 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. All right, we are doing this tonight, Saturday night. What are we going to do? I have a question. I have a question. I have a question. We're going to answer questions. Okay, wait. Your repping in and out jacket, is it because of about how many animal fries you ate in 2019? Can you get the camera over here? Can you get a zoom in? Can we get a zoom in? So I just got this fresh in and out bomber. Um, you know what? Get, answer I the question. How many I animal fries? How okay, many I animal stopped fries? eating the animal fries uh, because oh, they're, so um, good. they're so good. It's just a lot of cheese, you know? But those animal That's fries are so good. Let me tell you how I do. So either I will roll up to In-N-Out. There's one right by my house. Uh-huh. I, I eat In-N-Out at least three times a week. Legitly. So I'll roll up. I'll be like, let me get the three by three with get cheese. get a three by three. Hold up. Three by three with cheese. Mm-hmm. Animal style. Uh, with raw and grilled. grilled onions. And then I do lettuce wrap with extra lettuce. And then if I'm feeling real loco, I go animal fry. But then my other order will be two double doubles, animal style, extra lettuce, whole grilled onions, and raw lettuce wrap. No, okay, no. Because I'm, I unfortunately I can't eat bread. Okay, I'm allergic to bread, but it's good because see, see the gut. I, well, you don't see a gut. See that? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. There might be a fold or two there. <laughs> It is. That's why I got the bomber jacket. I told him, give me a size bigger. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely don't got no six pack. No have you, dude, have you got the chopped chilies there? Or can you eat chilies? I, can't, no. I, I messed my stomach up, man. I know. So, anyway, so good. with that said, yeah, in and out. But have you seen those new slip ons, though? I've seen them. They look dope. I can't even get a pair. They sold out. Like, I, was, I posted them, like, yo, let me, I'm going to get some for my kids. Uh-huh. I was going to get all the triplets, you know, in the, in the, in those slip-ons, but um, they were all sold out quick. I know, they're dope. However, they're getting a new reorder, so trying Legit. to scoop them up. Legit. I, did I send you that picture the other day of the, that DJ, yeah, that I huge DJ that. wearing... Yeah, I saw that. Uh, You're rocking them. He's, he's playing for the thousands of people, and it just says, what about those? Are those... Or what about those? Are they in and out? And it just has, like, the, the slip-on shoe. Yep. So sick. Buttery. Anyway, I'm, I'm trying to get in and out when I get out of here now. Now that I'm thinking <laughs> about it. Can we order some double-doubles? Get it cracking, lacking, lacking. All right, so what do we got? Um, we got questions. We got Lucas in studio today and Sean McKeon. Um, let's get it going. Yep, let's do it. What do we got? All right. So wait, wait, I want to plug this. Listen, we want to hear more of your questions. So uh, we, do, uh, we're, we do live shows where we do call-ins, and we also do, because uh, you know sometimes people are out on Saturday night and they can't call in. Right. So we actually do, um, you can email us, go to thewhosoevers.com, shoot your questions through, we're on Instagram. You could uh, send it to the Instagram uh, DMs. I, I can't keep up with all the DMs. I'm married with kids, so yeah. it's too hard to keep up with all that stuff. But email us, and we will get it, and we will answer those questions. Or call in live, whatever you want, whatever you want to do. Perfect. All right, let's go for it, Lucas. What Six. do we got? Question numero uno. What can I do as a parent to help my child that is dealing with suicidal thoughts? Mm. Well, first of all, there, that's a loaded question because first of all, you got to go in and do inventory and see what he's into or this, him or her. Um, is it, is it because he's he or her, she is addicted to social media? Um, are they experimenting with drugs? Are they into pornography? Um, is this something that's none of the above? And is it something that they were born with? Is there a chemical imbalance? Um, you know, we have friends that are on like lithium, you know, and if he's not on, it's because he's, he has a chemical imbalance. So if he's, when he's on lithium, he's normal, but if he doesn't take his lithium, he's off. Um, also antidepressants cause depression, uh, when they, cause they live a life of uh, being in the cloud and they get off. And I've had people that, that they gained all this weight and they're like depressed when they get off because they don't remember half their life because they were in a cloud of smoke from these antidepressants. This is a loaded question. First of all, you're going to speak into this too, Sean. I would come, first of all, to the church and get meet with the pastor and, you know, have like a little counseling session. Have the pastor kind of dig in and find out what's going on in this, this, this kid's life. Um, is it his home environment? You know what I mean? 
Is it because the, fa the family's getting divorced? What is it? Dig in, observe the situation. And also, I would also, after meeting with the pastor first, because it could just be a spiritual thing that he could just be caught up in stuff that, you know, maybe some prayer can help. Prayer can always help. And some counseling. And But then maybe if it's, you know, something worse than that, maybe, uh, or I would say, go get some Christian counseling mm -hmm. from like a Christian counselor. Yeah. You know, because, yeah. right, I mean, you can't just diagnose this stuff. Um, God can do anything, yes, but it's also... He might, this person might just be chemically imbalanced. Yeah, yeah, you don't know. And I think, um, obviously, the number one thing is prayer. Yes. Because you want, not, not only are you praying for your child, you're also praying for wisdom for yourself. How should I approach this? The number one thing I would say, um, because we're seeing these stats rise in our nation, in the world, uh, suic suicides, whether they're older people or whether they're younger people. You know, there's a, a lot of people that you have seen um, stories of kids that are being bullied in school and as they're getting bullied in school they're not letting their parents know and they're carrying this burden and they're just uh, you know going crazy inside and they feel so isolated and um, ridiculed in so many ways and they find it as being a way out you know check out what they're into you know I, I would say having time that's invested in their lives is probably one of the greatest medicines you can have I think what Ryan said is the right steps you know if you're able to Go to a church that, that's legit, that can meet with them, pray with them. You know, hopefully they'll be granted wisdom of how to approach this. You as a parent, you need to be present. You need to be loving them. You need to be an example of Christ in their life. Obviously, you're calling the show. You most likely probably have a relationship with the Lord. Um, and if you don't, that's where it starts. Do you want to let them see your life being obedient to the Lord, walking in His grace and His mercy? And letting them know that there is always, because a lot of times the enemy just likes to overwhelm young kids, like their, their life is horrible, they're not going to make it through, so, you know, sometimes somebody gets dumped or, you know, they go through something, it's so hard. Just recently, uh, Scott Salamat, one of our, our youth pastors, was just dealing with a situation just this last week of uh, a kid that committed suicide at Bonita High School uh, just recently, uh, 14 years old. and. I don't know the, the situation, I don't know the background of it, but it's a young man and the results of it, so many people are mourning. The, the school is going, having counseling sessions for the students right now because they're dealing with this. And it's, a, it's an epidemic in our world. You know, we've definitely seen it with friends that we've grown up with that, you know, it's a deception, you know, everything's caving in on them. And at the same time, maybe some of them were off, you know, um, uh, mentally maybe and a lot of times with prescription pills because people throw them back and forth when you go on and off on and off on and off you get off balance as well and so that's why you just really need to exercise wisdom um and you know meet with a pastor they can start there and then hopefully direct you in the right place it all comes down to the heart issue you got to get down to what is going on in the heart that is causing this and there's a lot of things like we talked about just a couple of minutes ago that can lead to that cool What's, what's good? Cool. All right, so this next question is kind of like a three-part question. So I'm going to start off with the chunk right here. All right, I'm saved, but my husband is not. He has crystals laying around the house and has a Jehovah's Witness Bible and songbook. He has been experiencing sleep paralysis. Mm. My question is, because I have claimed the blood of Jesus Christ over my house, these things should no longer have power, right? Are my children safe from the forces that some of these things have attached to them? And lastly, isn't the spirit of Jesus stronger and more authoritative than any other physical thing that might be in our home? I would tell you to go to our show, our library on um, YouTube or on our app and look up the Stephen Bancar's show with Sean and I. We talked about the New Age crystal stuff where uh, Satanism came from and the strongholds and the footholds that they have of having these... Um, uh, idols or not idols. What are the, what, what's another word for these idols? These uh, uh, paraphernalia, I yeah, guess. I, I think idols is some idols. Word. So, I mean, so what's okay. going on with what's going on is first of all, God is greater than all this. But what's going on is you got all these idols. These uh, I can't think of the word, but by these things being in your house, the it's opening the doors for Satan to come in and mess with you. That's what's causing all this stuff. Crystals are new age. It's all new age. It's to, to open up the chakras and to open the doors to the spirit realm. 
that's exactly what's happening. He's having supernatural encounters because you got this, you got to go, you got to clean house out. You can't have these idols to these other gods basically in your house. So you got to get rid of the crystals, throw that Jehovah's book out the window and uh, go through and see if there's anything else. And then anoint your rooms, the doors. I even go and anoint all four door, four walls of my house on the outside um, and put oil on it and pray that God will send his Holy Spirit and push out anything that's darkness and plead the blood of Jesus on the house and uh, tell your husband that that's why those doors are open. That's why that stuff's happening. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and for sure, Je Jesus, has, there's power in the name of Jesus. And all authority has been given in Jesus' name. There is no doubt about it. But like Ryan said, as you have let doors, there are doors that are open, whether they're from your own doing, which doesn't sound like it is. It's your husband, but the same thing, you're in one home, you're in one house. And the, house, the Bible says the house divided, what happens? It can't stand. And what the enemy does is if he can't get to you, he'll go to your the husband or go to, to the children as well. So it's a spiritual battle that you are facing. Mm -hmm. I think the number one thing is um, you need to pray. You need to pray for your husband. It sounds like he has this mix of um, spirituality, like he's seeking or searching for spirituality. That's why you have a, mm -hmm. a Jehovah Witness Bible and you have these crystals or whatever. They're all false cults and mm -hmm. religions. So there, it must be a desire for him to seek out you know, truth or whatever, but he's finding it in the wrong area. And again, Satan, false teachings, the Bible says that when there is false teachings, these doctrine, these idols, they're like doctrines of demons. And that's why behind it, there's a spiritual warfare that's taking place. Got to pray for your husband's salvation. You need to continue making a stand for Christ in your own, in your own house. You know, the sleep paralysis. I mean, you know, I know they try to label that physically, but we've always said, dude, it's it's the demon demonology that's taken place. Me and Ryan both have had experiences before we were walking with the Lord where these things happen, where we were getting held down. I actually have heard of uh, people that um, that knew the Lord, that but their house was being oppressed through that. There's a spiritual attack, and so you have to be able to be prayerful and mindful. This is the deal. It doesn't matter what, if, if you're not into Jesus and you're into Jehovah's Witness or Mormonism or New Age or the Ouija boards or Sensoria or devil worship, it's all the occult at the end of the day. So basically, by you having crystals in there, that's like having a Ouija board in your room or the, 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 the Bible of Satan. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's no difference. Like, oh, it's just crystals or it's just a Jehovah's Witness. These are doorways. It's, it, they're occult practices. At the end of the day, who is the guy that created all the occult? Satan. Satan. So that's how serious is. You know, that's what, that's what Satan uses. He uses these, these things. Oh, it's just crystals. Oh, that's no big deal. You know, but what's behind it? It's Lucifer. He disguises himself like the angel of lights. All right, we're going to go to the next question here. All right. So Good question. <laughs> So this was a simple question that I'm pretty sure a lot of listeners have. This is, this one is, why do good people suffer? That why? is a great question. You always break this down so well. I'm going to listen to you on this one. Why do good people suffer? This is probably, Ravi Zacharias says that if there were 10 questions that were going to be asked in any seminar, this would be number one or number two always. Because so often it is the atheist or it's a person that doesn't believe in God. And they say like, well, if somebody is, Let's just say that, you know, God is real. Let's just say that, you know, Christians are, are saved by grace. Well, I know Christians, their lives aren't, aren't great. I've seen Christians suffer. I've seen them get diagnosed with cancer. I've seen them lose children. I've seen them die. You know, you know, why do good things happen? Why do bad things happen to good people? Why suffering? I think that this is a hard question only in the sense of, we don't know the mind of the Lord. The Bible says his ways are high above our ways. But what we do know is this. We do know that God is good and his mercy endures forever. We do know that God holds our life in the palm of his hand. And the Bible says that he knows the day and the hour that we will take our first breath and when we will take our last breath. We also understand this. Suffering is a way of life. God allowed Job to suffer. The Bible says that he, there was nobody more righteous than Job. So you can't say that Job suffered or he went through um, affliction because there was sin in his life. No, 
it made it very clear because he was more righteous than anybody. He prayed for his children every day. He loved his wife. And then even when all of those forsook him, he lost his wife, he lost his children, he lost all of his possessions where he was a very rich man. It says that naked I came into this world, naked shall I depart, blessed be the name of the Lord. And all of this, Job did not sin, but he was challenged. And all the way in the end, the Bible says, if you finish the story of Job, if not, maybe you go through it and you get depressed. You're like, I can't take this book no more. But in the end, it says that Job ended up having more children, had more possessions than he had in the beginning. We look at Paul. To me, Paul is probably one of the greatest examples of a man of God. A guy that was rebellious towards Christianity, throwing Christians into prison, and then gets dramatically um, transformed by God's grace and by God's Holy Spirit. Now his mission is to tell others about Christ. He surrendered his life to the Lord. Everything is for Jesus. So his life should be good, right? No, wrong. Peter and John, same thing, thrown into prison for their faith, beaten multiple times for being a Christian. Paul was prisoned multiple times. And also, many people believe that the affliction that Paul suffered and he was never healed in his life was maybe due to a time where he got jumped so bad, got beaten to a pulp, people thought he was dead. And for the rest of his life, he had an ailment. Some people think it was migraine headaches. Some people think it was some kind of malarial fever. Or something that affected his eyesight. Everybody feels like they're on the same level of that. But Paul says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. He says, I prayed for the Lord three times to take this away from me. And when he said three times, he's not saying one, two, three. It's actually in reference to multiple times. But the Lord did not heal me. And the Lord said this, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. The book of 2 Corinthians all has to do about suffering and comfort in the believer's life. We're not able to answer all the whys. You know, I know godly people. Chuck Smith died of cancer. Yeah. You know, there, there are never godly smoked a th th Never life. smoked a cigarette, never drank in his life. I can't answer all these things. But what I do know is that this, we live in a fallen world. This world isn't created for what it was in the beginning. That's why there's diseases in, in our world today and more diseases. The Bible says in the last days there will be more diseases that are going to be plaguing the world. And so because of the fallen of man, the fall of nature, affliction is a part of life. But Jesus says this, In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Why do good people suffer? You know, sometimes for the glory of God. You know, I, I brought this up the other day, and I actually, it was funny, Sonny Sanderville texted me out of nowhere. I was teaching for Garrett Beeler, and like an hour after I was done teaching, he texted me just to say what's up. And it's like, dude, I just used you in an illustration of my study. That's a trip. Like out of nowhere. And it wasn't on my notes or anything. Yeah. But I, I kind of referenced this of like, why do people suffer? Why do you go through testings? And I'm like, Sometimes for the glory of God, maybe something past you don't even realize. I go, Sonny Sandoval's mom was diagnosed with cancer. She lived like a wild girl when she was younger, caught up with gangs and selling drugs and that whole thing. On her deathbed, she is dying of cancer, and she says to her son, Sonny, I can't go until I know that you are going to know the Lord, that you are going to serve the Lord. And then obviously, Sonny, in his early teenage years, you know, he's very easy to get hooked up with gangs, you know, smoking weed and, and doing that stuff and kind of getting influenced, seeing him wander. And it was at that moment, Sonny talks about in his room where he submitted his life to the Lord. And I told the people, like, what if, like, through her suffering, the death, someone that he valued in her life, yes, she suffered. She went to go be with heaven. Maybe her life was cut short. But I'll tell you what. The impact that she made on this one life, her son, and then on the wife, Shannon, and their children. And you and I both say, Sonny's one of the nicest guys, mm -hmm. family-driven man that loves the Lord and has done amazing things for God. All because one person suffered, saw suffering, and saw somebody that still glorified God. We don't have all the answers for suffering, but we know that God works out His purposes Sonny in our lives. Sonny also, his life has impacted millions of and yep. millions of people. Yep. He's the lead singer of the band P.O.D. And, and his songs and his lyrics, I mean, you still hear those songs at big UFC fights and mm -hmm. I mean, they're still played movies. on the radio, these anthems, yep. movies and all that stuff and, and the messaging behind it that, you know, about God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy.
Yeah, God always has a purpose. You don't see it at, at the moment. You know, there's a lot of people that have been in on uh, deathbeds. They come to the Lord because they get humbled. Sometimes you just, some, a lot of people can show you how to live. And other people in your life will show you how to die. Mm. You know, you'll see somebody die the right way. You'll see somebody die still praising God, mm. afflicted beaten down have so many d diseases or illnesses and you're like man dude your but, life is tough but then but then also god uses stories like situations where like you know our story with our triplets you know when my wife was on bed rest and we thought they were gonna die and mm -hmm. this whole thing but god it, there it was very painful physically it was very emotional um it, it was it was it was a nightmare mm -hmm. it was cost a lot of money i mean there was just a lot of bad stuff mm. for nine months or eight months should i say horrible it was just bad it wasn't cool at all and then what god did is he ended up using that story now and now that i tour all over the world and i tell the story mm. and we've seen thousands and thousands of people give their life to the lord let me read one verse because i referenced it second corinthians chapter four um, 2 Corinthians all talks about suffering and how to stay, you know, above, you know, walking with the Lord. He says this, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, he says, He comforts us in all of our tribulations, speaking about the Lord, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble as well with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. That's exactly what you said right there, Ryan. It says that He comforts us, and then when we see other people going through the same thing we've gone through, we're able to say, hey, look, yeah. God comforted us. He was with us through the storm. He showed himself to be faithful. He's going to be in your life as well during this storm. Yeah. Yeah. That we're able to testify. Yep. Cool. What else we're you gonna got? We're going to do the next one. All right, guys. So how do you deal with stress? I find myself getting overwhelmed and taking it out on other people. Have you ever been stressed before? No. We're no. going to we're, we're gonna take another question. <laughs> I'm stressed right now. Ah! <laughs> um, this question is stressing me out. Ah! <laughs> Dude, we live in a stress-driven world. We and for us that live in Southern California, there's so many people. We we live in a fast-paced society, and when a lot of people they they come come here, or they if you live here your whole life, it's just a way of life. But people that come from the outside sometimes, or they start living here, they recognize that fast-paced life. And I think with multimedia stuff that we all are encounter with a lot Everything of Everything got faster now with emails. Everything. And, yeah. You DMs. know, if somebody had to call you, like they can call you at will on your phone. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's like back in the day, it'd just be one place where they could call you. That's why I'd be screening people <laughs> all day long. Everybody's nice screening second. calls now. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, you have no privacy. Yeah. You're hanging out with your parents, all of a sudden you're getting a call from work. Hey, so check this out. Um, stress. Well, I would say this. For me, because I could get very, we could all get very stressed because we could take on a lot of, too much stuff. But what I'm constantly telling me and my wife is we're constantly looking at each other and saying, how do we simplify? Simplify. Like, yeah. what's stressing you out? Okay. Like, let's just say uh, something like if it's a job, you know, I don't have work. Okay, I understand. You got to pay bills. But then there's other people's kind of stress where... You know, they're just they're just caught up and in, in, in they're not focusing. You, if you're all caught up and all over the place and you're not really honing in and yeah. focusing life and you're trying to do too much, maybe you should be having too much fun. You should be working more or maybe you should, you know, maybe you're working too much and not have enough fun. Like you got to look at your life. What's the stress? This is a loaded question. Yeah. Why are you stressed? Uh, OK, let's just, I'll just be transparent so I could so I don't have to talk about people. I can talk about myself. I can get stressed if I'm trying to I'm trying to spend time with my kids. I'm trying to spend time with my wife, but then I'm working too much. I'm doing too many speaking engagements. I'm traveling too much, but then I'm not even taking care of like things that I have to do in my personal life. You know, you still got to do stuff in your personal life that doesn't have to do with your wife and your kids mm -hmm. or your work. There's things that I, Ryan Reese wants to do. Mm -hmm. You know, like I want to go skate, mm -hmm. skateboard. I want to go surf. I need that release to some people go work out or whatever for stress for me not to be just i need to go and, and be active mm -hmm. so if i'm doing all this other stuff but i'm not able to go skate or surf or, or do stuff to like release yeah. 
dude, I'm like, you know, that's yeah. why a lot of people drink and do drugs. Right. Because they, they don't have, they don't, they can't just go to the park or go to the gym because they don't want to. They just go home and smoke weed or drink beer, yep. you know? And then you've, you, and then you like have to support your weed habit or your alcohol problem right. or you right. wake up hang, hung over and then you're more stressed out yep. because you're so foggy the next morning that you can't even get done. I remember doing that, being so stressed out the next day because I'm like, I'm so foggy and I have so much work to do. Yeah. Too many drinks the night before. Yeah. You know, I think that how do you deal with stress is going to be a part of life. So now we're to say biblically. Huh? <laughs> that was just some life application. Let's talk about biblically. Yeah, no, no. Stress is going to be a part of life. Um, and one thing that you can make to make it worse is to meditate on everything. You don't know how bad things are, and uh, we're never going to make it, and blah, 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 blah. You are going down a pathway that is going to wear you out. Wear you out. You sent that a scripture the other day, right? Um, and it's in Colossians, I think 3 1, where it says, Set your mind on things above and not on things of the earth. That's yeah. a simple scripture, but it's so powerful. Yes. I remember, like, when I was just doing maintenance here in the first year, and I was cleaning the front desk, mopping the front desk, and one of the pastors gave that scripture as an advice. And I remember just overhearing them say it and it just clicked. It was like, that's where it's at. Because I could get so bogged down, getting so focused upon this, this life, what, how bad my life is right now, and not set my mind on things above and not on things of the earth doesn't mean that i check out and i'm not you know dealing with reality but it's putting things in perspective you said simplify i agree i think sometimes you have to simplify things there are things that maybe we take on our lives that are not necessary i've done things where i've gotten too busy before and i try to do a lot of things and as i get older and i do ministry i worked physically hard for so many years i could work i could clean i could do a lot of things physically and did that for what 15 years of my, in my life growing up but then doing ministry is a different kind of stress it's a different kind of animal at times a lot of great a lot of great moments in my life no doubt and then being a father and, and being a husband and having that balance i have to have time where i am dedicated to get rid of stuff that's garbage listen to the listen to the word or read the word pray but also i need those elements too i need to go to the gym in, in the morning I got to do different things like that. I got to tune out sometimes. I got, got to turn off my phone or not take things because a lot of times all these added distractions, I mean, you theme the whole Kill the Noise tour with the reality of like the world is so bogged down with so much information, the whole world's stress. And they're trying to, you know, we weren't made this way, man. We, we were made to have a relationship with God. That's what the Bible says. Um, and so we need to have that time and not get so caught up in all the distractions simplify you have to simplify i mean you could get dude i have this like to-do list on my phone do you have one of these to-do lists every day you wake up and you have like a list of things you got to do no i don't do that you don't run that i do it by my mind you're so i'm different i'm different <laughs> you're so smart well obviously i'm doing more than you then <laughs> maybe uh i have my hit it's my hit list every day of what nice. i do so but, go to the bathroom. But then you what go to the bathroom, it? eat tacos, go to in and out <laughs> eat chocolate shake. Um, no, the whole thing is, is I, I can look at my list and go, like, do I really need to do this? Right. Does this even really matter? Mm. You, or, or, or is this just on my hit list? I got my secondary list right here. See, here, guys, secondary. Yep. And uh, this is, like, stuff that I want to do, but I'm like, you know, it's just there when I want to do it, but I just need to do what I f need to focus on every day. And then you got to simplify, like, why am I do Then you got to look at things like, why am I even doing that? Yeah. Like, is that going to benefit, like, my life? Is this good for me to go do this? Why should I go hang out with certain people? So, I mean, right. or should I spend time with my, my family? The whole thing, you know, and then the whole other stress is like kids. Yeah. Having kids in your life, um, being a parent, you know? Yeah. So there's all kinds of stresses. And it all goes back to, just you got to simplify what what matters. You know what I mean? Everything that you're doing in your life, what what really matters at the end of the day? Like if you were to die tomorrow or if you had a week to live, would you be doing everything you're doing right now on your list? Right. Yeah. <laughs> simplify and do what matters basically. But hey, anyway, you know, I was talking about that verse the other day. Think of things that you love. That was the uh, life verse. Barn on break right now, guys. We'll be back in two minutes. With Ryan Reese coming up. Is everything all right? Sure. Call now. 
1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag Live Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, I think I speak for the entire administration when I say whoop de doo Back to live with Ryan Reese. Don't say we didn't warn you. Loud noises! I just got cut off on the break. So what I was saying before the break is that the the life verse that we were talking about, not life verse, the, the verse of the day. Yeah. Think of things above. Yeah. The verse today says, My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. That's a good one too. Simple verse. But Powerful. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Okay, so the last question was, I need help with stress. Correct. We said life application. Simplify. Make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and don't do excess stuff because life is fast paced. Things move fast. You can get caught up in all this noise, all these distractions when you don't even need to be doing this stuff. Mm. Number one, and then your help comes from the Lord. He will give you the wisdom and discernment to see what you need to be doing and what you not need to be doing. Um, so with that said, um, I do want to plug, uh, we have the whosoever's movement that we are touring the world, um, going into the public schools, and we've been hitting some private schools as well, bringing the gospel, the cross. Jesus Christ died on the cross for the sins of the world. We are sinners. We need to repent of our sins. We need to give our life to him. He will fill us with the Holy Spirit, and through the work of the Holy Spirit in our life, we will live that life that we were created for. You go to the whosoever's.com. We have products. Um, we have shoes. We have hats, T-shirts, all premium products that we sell that fund our tours. Help. They don't fund 100% because it takes more than T-shirt sales, but it does help out, and it does uh, represent our movement that we are a great. We're, we live the Great Commission, and that's how you can support us. If you want to donate, we do like a 5 bucks, 10 bucks. You can give a large amount, whatever you want to do. It funds our high school tours. And then um, we have our app. It's free. You can download all the free radio shows. Um, I have the Gospel of John up there. Um, you can learn more about what we do. It's all there. The Whosoever's app and the whosoever's.com. And we also do live radio shows where you could call in or you could just email us. Like we're taking your questions today. You could just email us your questions. You could send a video question. You could just record it on Instagram, send it to our DM on the Whosoever's. And uh, we'll take your questions live um, on air uh, or take your questions when they come in via email or Instagram. So uh, get there. We're waiting. Send it and yep. we'll do it for sure. So what's the next question, Lucas? All right. We got, I messed up and cheated on my wife and I want to fix it. 
What should I do? Hmm. Go for it. No. <laughs> you start. Uh, but you do all the marriage counseling. Okay. I'll go. This is um, something that obviously it's going to be uh, very hard to overcome, but it's possible. Um, number one, you need to submit your life to the Lord. You probably re recognize that. You got to pray for her. You got to give her time because, you know, the Bible says that God hates divorce. God hates divorce. In the book of Matthew chapter 19, where Jesus is questioned about divorce, the Pharisee says this, if divorce isn't right, then why did Moses put it in the law? Jesus says, because of the hardness of heart. And then he would go on to say, let it be known that there is no reason that a marriage should be divorced other than sexual immorality. Sexual immorality was the one thing. And the reason why is because what it does is it violates this union, this bond, this unity between the two. Um, and I believe that God knows that hearts. Sometimes it's hard for that individual to overcome it. Okay. I was just going to ask this question, but since you said it, I want to, I want to intervene. Yeah. I'm going to ask you what happens if someone like, so like I'm in love with my wife, which mm -hmm. I am. Yeah. And the thought of her, if she slept with another guy, mm -hmm. cheat on me or whatever, mm -hmm. dude, I don't know if I could overcome that Yeah. because it, that would be so hard mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. And there's people that, and I'm not saying I would divorce her. I'm not just for the record. I, right. I, I, I'm, it's a challenge. I, I'm not, I'm just talking out loud here. I don't, the thought of the process of that happening, dude, that would be so crazy yeah. for me in reality. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why Jesus put that into consideration. It, it's brought up a couple times that being the only way mm -hmm. uh, for di divorce to be justified. But then on the flip side, you have someone like my my mom that she got a cheat on for several years from my dad, but she had the grace that God gave her to overcome to stay. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. And that let me tell you that as a good illustration because I actually did a show a couple of weeks ago with your parents because your your dad has a a new new marriage book that's coming out. Um, one thing that your mom said when she was going through the midst of her trial of that and there was a time like four years they would say four years of a physical abuse verbal abuse and obviously committing adultery she had this sense in her heart she's like what if i miss out on what god has for me what if something changes because right now in my flesh i want to bounce i'm done i'll take your other brothers because yeah. you weren't born yet Raul jr and shane and then I'll just go do my life, but what if a miracle could happen? Fortunately, she continued to intercede with your grandparents and stuff, and eventually your dad was broken um, and came to the Lord. Obviously, God has done amazing things in their life. A lot of challenges. You know, they've definitely gone through a lot of testings in their life through it. It's not ideal by any means, um, but God did do a miracle through it. It's not that it's impossible that a when somebody commits adultery like this that it can't it can't be fixed. I've seen it. I know couples in this ministry, the ministry that I've been a part of, Golden Springs, that outright, blatantly committed adultery, caught without you know saying anything, and the person that got caught on is like ex gangster girl and guy that's like I'm gonna cut this fool, you know, and that was the flesh, and before you know it. God starts breaking them and then softens their heart. And like, all right, I'm, we're going to try this. We're going to try this. I don't want to. We're going to try this. But that, what, what it comes down to is that person legit and genuine. For you, you got to be genuine. If you really want this marriage to fix, you have to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. You have to be willing to pay the consequences, which is going to be a woman that doesn't trust you for quite a while. Um, all the challenges, probably stuff thrown your way but you stand in the gap and you continue plugging. You know what? You might not love me right now. You may not care for me. You may not want this to work, but God is breaking me. I want this to work. I'm going to stand in the gap. I'm going to continue to pray for you. And I'm praying for a miracle that God's going to change, transform your life. If that person says, I don't want to, I am done. And I'm going to divorce court and I'm doing, I'm going through the whole thing because I can't forgive you. They have that right. 
in this uh, uh, sense of adultery. But I would also say, I would always warn this aspect as well. You got to make sure that you make decisions that are based upon God's word, especially that person. If that woman is a believer as well, she has to come to the Lord. Lord, is this what you want for my life? Because you throw in children. If you have children as well, you two will be connected with each other for the rest of your life. And you just want to really make sure that you've counted the cost in every area. You know, there are some that are able to be reconciled. There are some that aren't able to. But my advice to you would be submit to God. Be genuine. Don't walk in darkness. Don't play uh, the game. Don't wait for a quick fix because it's not going to happen overnight. Stay faithful to the Lord and then ju just understand that God can do miracles and, and that's it and give so, her time. So taking it that this guy's for real, that he wants to repent, yeah. know that God will forgive you and you can move on and God can restore because he's in the busy because the power comes from heaven and that's yeah. how it goes down. Now, to the listener that's thinking about cheating, yeah. did you hear this story right now? Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. You know what I mean? Like we, right. we, I've had me and my wife, we've had conversations about you know, like is cheating worth it? You know what I'm saying? You know, just because we just talk about yeah how these these situations happen. You hear about them all the time, actually, and it's those shiny objects that Satan throws in front of people, and. Um, Dude, it is totally not worth it. I mean, you, you, you have this trust and this bond with your wife, and then you cheat. That's broken. And then if, and then if you have kids, yeah. and at the end of the day, you're talking about just like a, a sleeping with a, a person for like, like right. whatever, once, twice, five times, a hundred times. I mean, but like, is it worth? Is it worth it? Like, is it worth it? No. Like for sex. Yeah. It's, not. it's crazy. I mean, unless you're like crazy and you're like, I'm leaving my wife and I'm going after this girl. Well, then you're going to divorce her anyway. But you, you, is it worth it? You cheat. Clearly it wasn't worth it because you cheat on your wife with this girl, but then you want your wife back. So clearly in the first place, this girl was never worth it mm. because you want your wife back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like That's there's it's almost like a different mentality. Like if you're like, I'm, you know what? I don't care about my wife. And hey, if it goes wrong, and yeah. I'm gone. Yeah, that's like that's like, okay. There's nothing to lose in a. I'm not saying nothing to lose, but how, better way of saying it is like, why would you? I guess my what I'm trying to say is, why would you cheat if you knew the girl wasn't worth it anyway? Yeah. To leave to leave your wife to come back to your wife. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's the thing. The flesh is never satisfied. The flesh is never satisfied. And, and the I guilt. Go, I couldn't live with the guilt. Oh yeah. Dude, the guilt, I, that's what I told my wife. I'm like, there's no way I would cheat on you ever, obviously for many reasons. Yeah. But I'm like, if we might cheat, I couldn't live with the guilt. Yeah. Dude, that would drive me nuts. But some people, Ryan, they just get blinded and they harden their heart and they think they're right. You know, sometimes believers, uh, uh, unbelievers too. I mean, I walked, we talk about this when I was. But as a believer, if you have the Holy a, Spirit in yeah, you, no, as a believer, the guilt would drive you crazy. Oh, not yeah. a believer. If you're not yeah. a believer, well, yeah. even if I. Even if I wasn't a believer, I wouldn't be able to live with the guilt. Yeah. It, it just does so much, so many damages, you know, and I would just really caution. I, and I'm glad you brought that up, too. Like, if you guys are even thinking about it, you know, that's why the, the, the Proverbs, dude, read a proverb a day. Dude, it says it over and over again. Don't allow that adulterous relationship to catch your eye because in the end, you're going to tra trade in all of your riches for a crust of bread. And the man's going to want to kill you. And the man's going to want to kill you. It's Dude, not worth it's it. It's crazy. That's a heavy one. And we didn't be light of that conversation. That was real, yeah. honest, truthful stuff coming yeah. from our hearts yeah. here. Yeah. Because that's a, we've thought, I mean, and, we've, we've had this conversation so many and times. And it's probably one of the, the most repeated offenses in the church. I mean, yeah. what, what if there were, if I was to go percentage wise of phone calls that come in, marriage is probably top, probably 70%. And then drug addiction, you know, maybe suicidal thoughts are, are right there. But um, an adulterous affair, I think my husband's cheating. That, that's why I say it's like, dude, I don't have any secrets with my wife. Is she going to look at my phone, text, my social media? She has your code? Yeah, no, I'm, man. Just, I'm just joking. You, you know, so it's like, <laughs> you know, but you know, there's some people that are just so like, oh, 
can't, can't help. Why? Yeah. Because you don't want to give the enemy a foothold in your life, too. Hey, me and my wife, we have the same code. You have the same code? Yeah. You're so godly. <laughs> <laughs> so she can't forget it. No, we almost. So have, I know hers. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reality. Yeah, no, she could go on anywhere. Uh, she you is, want that she, yeah you want transparency well that keep, that keeps you safe it does that that's the guidelines that keeps you safe um yeah she can go wherever she wants wherever she wants look to my phone i don't even care satan wants you to walk in the shadows maybe you're not walking in straight darkness he wants you to walk in the shadows a little bit hey have you ever seen uh something funny have you ever seen that uh video did i send it to you where it was on instagram where the guy was like he was stabbed like five times or shot and he's like i'm gonna die Call 911 and he's like, I'm dying. And then his girlfriend comes in and she's like, here, she's like, here, unlock your phone so I can call. And he's all, oh, yeah. No, oh, I'll die. And he, <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I he's saw like, that. no, I won't give you the code to my phone. And he died. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that one. That was hilarious. That is the best. But that's, that's the stubbornness. That's the, right? <laughs> Yeah, high stuff all the way to the grave. Oh that's my crazy. God, best, best. Gosh dang it, that's the best. Okay, let's go for it. We got another one. Oh, that's good. Cameron, huh? One of our, our tech guys in here. I'll die. No. Ah! I see the light. I see the light. Okay, what's the next question? All right, so I'm struggling with staying sober. What did you guys do to maintain sobriety? Refer to a radio show from the week before. Um, go for it. Oh, you want me to go? Struggling with staying sober, what do you guys do to maintain it? You know, some, a lot of times people want myself or Ryan to give like this. Um, the, Method. The, quick, the, quick, the quick fixes to not drink no more. Do you know what I'm saying? And the reality, people that know us, we don't always, like Ryan shared his testimony a lot. I've shared things in my life, but... We only scratch the surface of what our lives once were, to be honest. Um, we drank all the time. I smoked weed every day. I was strung out on meth for multiple seasons, months, and sometimes years at a time. And we drank all the time. So when we're saying like it's possible, we're not just giving lip service. You know, I we were talking about something earlier that I was triggering in my mind. It's like back in the day, like whenever you met up with a friend, whether you're just meeting up for lunch or whatever, you're always drinking. You, you, you felt like you needed to drink just to have a conversation a lot of times. Um, and so... Yeah, was, the conversation was a, a, a reason to drink. Right. Conversation was a, a reason to drink. And so for both of us, it wasn't some, you know, new book or anything like that. It always came down to brokenness, man. You know, going to church, reading the Bible, prayer, God started changing my life. And I started to look at like, we said it earlier in another show. We said it in another show about don't be f um, filled with, the, with, with alcohol. Don't be drunk with wine. Don't be intoxicated with wine, but be intoxicated with the Holy Spirit. Why do you drink? You drink to take the edge off. You, you drink to suppress maybe a depression or whatever. But now when you come to the Lord, the Lord wants to be your sense of comfort and peace and guidance and guess what it's lasting yeah. i don't have to go to the liquor store and go get drunk i don't have to worry about driving to and fro because i'm going to get a dui uh -huh. alcohol drinking it destroys it probably destroys your life up to the per per time so for me it's no okay this is what you got to do this is what you got to do it's as simple as brokenness at the cross desiring more of the lord and him changing your desires and that's it. And not playing games. Recognizing like, you know, a lot of people want to start continuing being like casual drinkers or whatever. Dude, I can't do that. Never had. I remember when I was walking with the Lord just for a couple months and I thought like, well, I could probably have a beer or whatever. I had one beer one time and I didn't feel right. I, me personally, I just felt convicted in my heart because for me, I want to drink. Then I want to get cocaine. Then yeah. you're, before you know it, you're living the life again. Well, let me ask a question to that question. Um, you clearly want to quit. So why do you keep doing it? Like if you don't like it, it's not, it's not filling you. Yeah. It's not, it's not satisfying you. A relationship with Christ. He, if you press into him and you get real, like Sean was saying, you get real with him, he's going to get real with you. He's going to feel you. He's going to, he, he will help remove those desires. But the whole thing is you, you, 
you gotta you you got these habits. You gotta go the different de- different direction. That's what repentance means. Stop going in that direction. Stop going to those areas. Right. Where are you drinking? Stop driving there. Mm. If are you hanging out with certain people that are drinking all the time, stop hanging out with them. You gotta like yes. Repent means to flip a U turn. Yep. Go the different go the different direction. You know, and then through a relationship with Christ, that's what God does. The word of God will transform you. You have a problem drinking, don't drink a soda in a bar. <laughs> you know, I yeah, heard Chuck said yeah, before yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just gotta you gotta change where you are and hang you out. Have to, you have to too. change your you have to change your lifestyle. Yeah. That's the that's the bottom line. Your your routine, change your routine. Yeah. It's very simple. Uh, that's what I did. I changed my routine. Yep. Okay. What else? Sick. All right. I got a current events question. It says, what is your opinion on Kobe's death and impact on the world? Kobe Bryant. I haven't been paying attention too much to it. Um, but you are a Laker guy. Yeah, no. You know, the Kobe Bryant death, I will say there's a lot of things I think you could take from it. One, if you live in Southern California, Kobe Bryant is an, an icon. Yeah. A basketball icon. Not only was he very talented, came into the NBA at 17 years old, legit skilled style wise everything he impacted you play for 20 years everybody knows him love him hate him whatever he was known differently than some of the other guys he wasn't like a homeboy like kind of getting caught up in stuff he was a very educated dude that was driven he was driven um why in this death we talked about this a little bit because you were about to go on the trip on your trip when this happened you saw kobe bryant photos on every feed I don't care if you were a dirt bike, you know, in motocross. Right. I don't care Everyone. if you were like a skater. I don't care if you were in uh, NFL or just a common person. People were just boom. It looked like you were on a Laker site. Um, this individual, you know, impacted a lot of people through sport. You know, the other thing he was doing movies. Um, he would become an entrepreneur. A lot of entrepreneurs. He put a book together about being a businessman and everything. So I think that's why it impacted so many people. But I think what you could pull from it is this. It doesn't matter how much money you have, how much success you have. In one day, your life can be taken from you. Yeah. I, I think from, from him, for him, and it was something that he did all the time. I, I actually wrote a d- devotion on this because the Bible says, do not boast about tomorrow if you do not know what a day may bring forth. It was a route that he would take four, four times out of a week in this, this helicopter location and just one, you know, trip accident, boom, him and eight other people were tragically lost. And it was, he had his daughter with him as well. Horrible. I would say this though. And there was other lo- daughters on there too. There was other daughters on there too. Um, I would say this one thing that I loved about Kobe, like he transitioned well, he was very successful, made a lot of money, stuff like that, but he actually made a conscious effort to be invested in his family. And that's what he was doing. He was taking a helicopter ride to be with his daughter, playing in a basketball game, coaching, and helping coaches. And that's how his life ended. That morning, he went to a church service before he left. Um, but yeah, I would just say, a lot of people were like he mourning. Went to church? He went to a church. He went to a Catholic church. He actually, they all say, because he was right there, he went from the John Wayne Airport right there in Orange County. And he lives out there, by, or he lived out there like by Fashion Island. You know, they had communion, they got prayed over or whatever, and then an hour later is when they, they flew towards wow. their destination. Okay. Yeah, so I, I would just say what we can all take from it, and that's why the world, like, mourned, and the, really the world mourned because of its impact. Dude, they said, like, there was over, th- from the Staples Center, people, fans and everything, they left, like, 1,300 shoes, like, signed shoes and basketballs and everything. It took... 35 trucks to get out all the flowers and everything that had been brought in because of like the Kobe Memorial, whatever. All of us, we're going to die one day. You have to make a decision. Are you ready to die? The Bible says nobody can come to the Father but through me. We're here today. We're gone tomorrow. That's why we do what we do. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us it is the power of God into salvation. I don't know how long we're going to live. You don't know how long you're going to live. But as long as we live on this earth, make sure that you're living out your purpose, your passion, your vision, and living today like it's your last day. With that said, it's true. I mean, who would ever thought Kobe Bryant out of all people? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. 
can happen to anyone. 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 I mean, this guy, he had money, success, flying in a, a nice helicopter. You know what I mean? This yep. is just, this, it's just, uh, it could happen. But, and you know, there, there's people die more in cars. Correct. I mean, everyone drives a car, so you're more at risk. Dude, so, we're fragile. The yeah. human body's fragile. It's, oh, it's so fragile. So far, you can get clipped by a car. Everyone's texting and driving. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got people riding bikes getting clipped just on the side of the road. It's like anything could happen at any time. And then you got the virus and all that stuff. Yeah. It's like anything could happen. But you know what? God is good. That's why we put our lives in him, and he is the hope. If anything does happen, that's our insurance. Right. Get insurance. Fall in love with Jesus Christ. Give your life to him because he's God, and he loves you. And when you die, you'll go to heaven. So we're going to end it here. We got about a minute left. Um, check out the whosoevers.com. Uh, we got all the past radio shows, many, many different topics. We invite interview artists, musicians. We had Opal, uh, human trafficking uh, detective, uh, Steve Bancars, uh, Ali Bra. I mean, all kinds of different people. Austin Carlisle Head, everyone. Get on there, watch the past shows. Uh, you can purchase our product, which supplies our helps provide for our movement, the whosoever's movement.com. Send in your questions. We got a new slip on shoe that's really amazing, a premium shoe that uh, will uh, that buy it, rep it, rock it. They're great. Um, what else? Got a lot of good things going on. Um, contact us. We want to go to your guys' school. Uh, go to the whosoever's.com. We do the kill the noise tour, We're bringing the gospel message. Uh, to the schools, uh, forgiveness of sins. They're sinners. They need to repent. They need to get filled with the Holy Spirit and uh, start living that life they were created for. And we're working with the Bible clubs that are on campuses. So Bible clubs are exploding. They're getting discipled. They're feeling they, they don't even have room for all the kids because so many kids are getting saved on the campus. And uh, we want to come to your country. We will come anywhere, wherever you're at. We're, right now we're touring Chile. Uh, we've been to Columbia, Australia. We're going to Texas, Florida, Seattle, Colorado. Um, I don't know, all over the place. We'll come anywhere. Bring us to Europe. We want to come check out Europe, Africa, wherever. India, we've been there too. So it's been awesome. I love you guys. And uh, Jesus loves you even more. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. Um, talk to you next weekend. Peace. Much love, guys. This has been Live with Ryan Reese. To connect or find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for Live with Ryan Reese.